I think teacher collaboration is um, a really personal term. It depends on the circumstances. Um, collaboration should be working together, working to achieve an agreed goal um, with defined outcomes that are measurable. Um, and I think it, it needs to be driven by the needs of the environment that you're working in. I think for teachers, there's an element that it's easier um, there's, in, in England, certainly, there are 13 national curriculum subjects to, to consider. Um, in a normal week, Monday to Friday, there's no time to fit 13 subjects in. The opportunity to bring together some of those subjects is, is from a teacher's perspective, makes life a little bit easier. But from, from, a, from an out, a child's learning perspective, it's about making those links and seeing those links and seeing how um, science can be real and fit um, with um, technology, for example, or understanding that um, artistic approaches are, are um, um, helpful in um, designing things. Um, I think the opportunities to make those links are really important, both for ease and for, um, for, for, for naturally seeing links. In real life, when we leave school, we don't, we don't sit and learn English and we don't sit and do some English. We're doing it for other reasons. We're writing for or reading or drawing or whatever we're doing. I think that is that is where the real life um, options come and opening up the career opportunities to see um, where an engineer might work linked with um, a scientific background and need mathematical understanding. Um, those subjects in, in, a, in life are not isolated. Scientists don't work in isolation. They have mathematical understanding. They work um, in a technological way. I think those are opportunities that need, um, that need to be made clear um, with very young children as soon as possible. Recognise what's going well. Um, Recognise where departments or um, age ranges or um, groups of teachers are doing things that are effective, um, whatever that might be, and giving them opportunities to share that practice. Obviously, in primary, we don't have departments, we don't have STEM sections. Um, teachers teach everything in a primary setting. And so um, often what happens is that teachers become quite specialised in their age, not in a subject. And I think giving people's teachers the opportunity to work with different ages and share their practice. Um, for example, early years practice is um, very much like a future classroom lab, for example. That's how prime little children learn. They learn in, in different areas. They choose which area is best to go and find the answer. Those experiences can be shared with teachers who work with older children and go and e explore and, um, and unpick what, why is that working, what, what can I take from that um, and, for, uh, uh, and the other way around. I think um, age vertical grouping opportunities both from children and from teachers perspective can be really helpful. Time's our most precious resource in schools, um, one we don't have enough of. Time mixed with money. Um, if you're going to facilitate c collaboration within the school day, that requires taking one teacher out of one setting and putting them in another. What happens in the setting they've left? Has they got quality support and learning still going on while the teacher's working with another one? Is there money to support that? Um, sometimes the barriers can be engagement as well. Um, staff not wanting or feeling like they have a need or feeling like there is a benefit to be earned. And I think head teachers have to be very clear on what the expected outcomes are and what and share those and make those a collaborative approach not to feel that that is um, something that is given to them and told to them but something they are part of and that is part of that school vision um, to take things forward and to learn from each other and I think that's that's a challenging job for heads is to provide that collaborative setting for people um, where it's not judgmental it's supportive. Uh, one of the examples I, I facilitated in a school is, is linked from um, a practical action project, um, Floating Garden Challenge, um, which is one of their freely downloadable um, STEM projects um, linked to flooding in Bangladesh and the opportunity arose for a school to develop um, a science week activity. Um, in England we, we, we have a big science week in, in March where um, where schools do all sorts of activities and this school had never worked on a science week activity before so we started simple and chose a project that was already there resources already made and use those for um, teachers to um, 
have a go at. So we had a staff meeting and we shared the idea and then we asked everybody to sit in their age ranges and talk about what that would look like in their age. So our very young children, what that would look like with three and four year olds and what that would look like with nine and ten year olds. And then we gave the opportunity to support the teachers um, in a team teach situation. So we could do a lesson together, we could do the planning together and we would plan a week in which that event had to happen. It was up to you when you did that. Some ch teachers chose to invite parents in to make that a collaborative project with the community. Some teachers chose that to be a project that they did for just one entire day. Some did little and often. But everybody had that opportunity to um, access expert support if they needed it but not if they didn't feel they wanted it. And then we did a reflection activity where everybody brought the work the children done, everybody shared photographs. We talked about what that had achieved. And then from that, that school now have a regular Science Week activity week the projects become bigger, but that's, those staff have confidence to understand a project-based learning linking to STEM subjects. Not It's called Science Week, but, but the more opportunities there are to, go to, to use STEM subjects, um, the more real that problem is. And I think using something like a practical action project gave the children some global understanding that was not um, overt, it wasn't deliberate, it wasn't badged as a, a global project, it was badged as a solve this problem. But underlying that was some really key messages about children and families living in countries less fortunate, um, living in circumstances where um, they're unable to grow their own food because of constant flooding. So yeah, it was a, it was a really um, deep project, but on the surface it was, it was quite simple and straightforward. Mm -hmm.